What's up guys? Welcome back to Newswave. So today we have to go over the MPDs because it turns out the Switch pretty much dominated the MPDs in January for the different systems and then it looks like Kingdom Hearts pretty much crushed it compared to the older Kingdom Hearts in January as well. So both of those look good. We've got to go through kind of some of the numbers and everything and then there's this interesting Smash Bros. data mine that took place that kind of gives us an idea as to what Joker's stage is going to be, but it also kind of points back to an older leak that might actually give us a bit more information because that actually would have been su substantiated a bit more with this data mining. Interesting stuff. We're going to go over all of that today and then more. As always, guys, enjoy these videos. Do hit the like button. It does help out. We're actually going to start today with Dreams. Now, of course, we had the beta for Dreams, and it was interesting to see all the different stuff that was being made in it. I mean, we saw Dead Space. We saw PT. All kinds of stuff. And it looks like now they're going to be entering the early access this spring, which is kind of neat. I mean, they were trying to figure out, I guess, what else they could do at this point, and I guess they're at least to the point where they have everything working, they're satisfied with the beta, and they're going to release it into early access for people to get their hands on who really want to start playing it, I guess, sooner rather than later. They're going to show up this spring, and it's going to be sold for $29.99 on the PlayStation Store, so you can go on there, pick it up, and people might be wondering what exactly is this. It seems like it's going to be Dreams, just with a... Uh, a more limited tool set from what they are going to have eventually, like down the road, obviously early access, and it'll just give them a way to kind of extend the beta, I guess, a bit further into early access and give people a chance to continue creating past the, the obviously, when they closed it down. And then, of course, they'll also be able to start bringing in money at $30. Interesting, though, to see that. I'm curious how long the early access will last, because they do say it is going to eventually end, I guess, and they'll stop selling early access copies and move into the full retail copy, but I guess early access people would then get the full retail version. It's something a bit different here that we're dealing with for one of Sony's uh, main projects, I guess, with Dreams, but uh, interesting stuff, and hey, if you were a fan of seeing stuff being made, or if you were just happy making it, there you go, you can get in this spring, start making stuff, or just see what everyone comes up with. Also, if you've been curious about those Resident Evil ports, they're supposed to be coming to the Switch, like uh, Resident Evil 4, for example, because uh, we heard about all this stuff getting ported over, last year and we haven't heard much i think after since then it's been kind of quiet we've been basically just hanging out waiting and at least now it looks like we're gonna get more information i guess by next week because according to the capcom community manager we should be hearing stuff as late as the end of this month which is next week good news there because i was getting a bit concerned i said what what's going on with those resident evil ports that capcom announced a while ago and hasn't done anything with I, I, I know we've bought Resident Evil 4 on a ton of different systems, obviously, and then the others, but, like, still, there are a lot of fans of it, and I'm, I'm curious what other additions they do with the Switch, if any. I, I mean, they did some, of course, that we saw previously with Revelations 2, where you use the IR pointer to uh, reload your gun, for example, and I'm curious if they bring over, like, the pointer controls using the gyro with the Switch from the Wii, so we'll see, but we'll at least find out more information here in the next week or so. We also found out more games that are coming to Game Pass in February, so this month, by the end of the month, you'll actually be able to rack up a couple more games on the Game Pass service. Maybe Crackdown 3 wasn't cutting it for you. Well, it looks like there are a few that will be showing up to the service that are a bit, I think, a bit better. Here's actually a nice little uh, picture here for you that show all the different games, starting with Batman Return to Arkham. That's February 21st, uh, so that's actually today you'll be able to pick that one up on Game Pass. Headlander is also February 21st, as well as Disney's Epic Mickey 2, The Power of Two. And then the following week, so the 28th, Walking Dead Season 2 will be there. And then Alien Isolation uh, also will be there on the 28th. That's a game that I actually liked at the time because it was different from what we've been used to for kind of more of the run and gun alien games. This one was a much uh, creepier, kind of helpless feeling when you're playing through it, and it was really cool. So if you missed out on Alien Isolation, this is the perfect time to take a shot at. Or of course, Want to get some Batman in, you can do that as well. But Game Pass continuing to grow, good service to pick up. And uh, of course, I didn't have to buy Crackdown because I have Game Pass. But hey, there's Alien Isolation as well. So I do like that they keep adding more and more stuff. And then I guess we'll find out what we get uh, in March as well. And guys, some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. We're going to start with MPD sales right away because it is an interesting thing to see here. Now, we of course talked about those kind of rumored leaked numbers, uh, and it looked interesting because the Switch was well ahead of everything else. It kind of gave us our placements, right? The Switch, PS4, and Xbox One. And we know at this point that the, that the Switch was number one. We don't really exactly know where the others place because they always seem to just tell us 
like which system sold the most dollars and units and that was just the switch like across the board and after seeing those leaked numbers it made sense however it, we can definitely see how much further the switch is ahead without them even telling us the exact numbers because they gave us some other stats. First though, we're going to take a look at the top 10 for the different games throughout January, starting with Kingdom Hearts 3. That was number one, which is good to see. Resident Evil 2, also great to see that up there as number two. So one and two, Kingdom Hearts 3, Resident Evil 2. New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe is number three, and that's interesting because that little star means they don't count the eShop uh, sales. So that's all physical. That doesn't count anything with digital. And I know the Switch has been obviously leaning into digital more than ever for Nintendo because it is, of course, a portable system. And downloading it's a bit better for some people who travel a lot rather than keep a bunch of cartridges. So I'd be curious if new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe would have jumped into that number two spot, maybe even with digital stuff uh, uh, counted. Call of Duty Black Ops 4 below that. Uh, that little little star next to it at the top means, I believe, the PC or the, the Battle.net sales are not counted. Smash Bros. Ultimate at number five. Red Dead Redemption 2 at six. Ace Combat 7 at number seven. Good to see. NBA 2K19 at eight. Mario Kart 8 is actually at 9 still. It's, it's still in the top 10. And then Grand Theft Auto 5 at 10. That game is always on these charts. Now, while total spend was down since last January, it was still fairly good if you kind of stack up Januaries against each other. But the big thing here was the Switch was the only system out of the three to actually grow year on year. The Xbox and the PlayStation 4 both fell year on year. And the Switch is going to be kind of a, a sales monster here in 2019. I think a lot of people are realizing that now going into it. New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe and Smash Bros. clearly drove sales of that system. It's also worth noting that Kingdom Hearts 3 was the best-selling game of January and was massive compared to uh, dollar sales from the previous franchise where it more than doubled the last best one, which would have been, I guess, Kingdom Hearts 2, according to the MPD tracker, and that is very large as well because, of course, the PS2 had a ton, I mean, a ton of people playing it or at least having the system back in 2006, I think, is when they would have tracked it. So, uh, interesting stuff there. New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe was also up 30% from New Super Mario Bros. U. That was a launch title for the Wii U, so while it is a game that most people probably picked up with their Wii U at the time, there are still way more Switch systems out there now, so it doesn't really matter, kind of outweighs that. So that at least makes sense, and it's pretty clear that new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, uh, the evergreen titles like Zelda, Mario Kart, of course, Smash now is kind of entering that status as we get into 2019. Definitely drove the Switch up to be uh, number one for the MPDs in January. And then we'll see February, March, and then we get into the back half of 2019. It's going to be massively stacked, definitely over the summer even, for the Switch. So, yeah, it, it's no wonder analysts are saying that this is like the Switch's year to just massively sell systems, especially over the others, the PS4 and the Xbox One, as they start to wind down and we start to look ahead to Scarlet and the PlayStation 5. Also, while we're quickly on uh, kind of the numbers and the sales in here, we're just gonna go ahead and jump into the Media Create sales very quickly. These are, of course, the physical sales in Japan, and we're gonna take a look at the top 10 right away with Jump Force at the top, number one on the PlayStation 4, 76,894. Catherine was number two, which is pretty cool to see that because, of course, I wasn't sure how many people would buy into Catherine uh, because I think the, the first one or last one we had, I know this is basically a reimagining of and revisiting it, but uh, that one was kind of a niche title, but 51,824. New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe uh, fell to three. That still is 34,541. That's coming up on half a million very rapidly. Smash Bros. Ultimate at four. Far Cry New Dawn actually at five there with 26,285. Kingdom Hearts 3 at six. Metro Exodus debuts with 17,513 at number seven. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee at eight. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at nine. And then Resident Evil 2 actually dropping all the way down to 10. Jumping over to the hardware, the Switch at the top, 65,958. Uh, we're going to come back to that because that is actually quite a bit if you were to look to last year's amount. Uh, 19,684 for the PlayStation 4 right below that. Uh, the 3DS 4,754 and then the Vita 1,767. Oh, and we can't forget about the Xbox 68. So that is actually down about 80 from last week. The, the Xbox One doesn't sell very well in Japan. But looking at that Switch number, it's a bit surprising to see that. Uh, again, I think it was just Older titles, evergreen titles, really pushing the Switch forward as a lot of new releases came out on the other platform, the PlayStation 4. But still, 
That is a lot, actually, compared to even last year that week at 39,303. It's no wonder that the Switch is quickly running to, uh, it's going to be coming up on a million units this year very rapidly. I mean, look at year to date already, it's almost a 600,000 units. And then Lifetime, it is now about 443,000 behind the PlayStation 4. That's going to be happening. It's probably going to be passing the PS4 probably before the summertime at this rate, which is fascinating to see. And again, it just shows that the Switch, 2019 is the Switch's year. I think most people understand that at this point when it comes to sales. And in Japan, it is going to absolutely dominate here going forward. The Vita will no longer be sold, uh, I think, after next month. So the Switch and the 3DS, Nintendo's two platforms, with obviously a massive push towards moving to the Switch when Pokemon gets announced. That's another big one, Gen 8, you know, the, the next big mainline hardcore Pokemon title that will really leave the 3DS behind at that point gets announced. And then basically the Switch is like the, the only handheld to buy in Japan. Next up, let's talk about this interesting Smash Bros. data mining that took place here. As you're seeing actually a tweet now, this is actually from Dr. Hypercake, and they found the Jack data mining line. Now, of course, before they'd found it, and then it disappeared. It was moved around seemingly. They're going back through the codes and the line and they found it again. But what's kind of uh, followed after it now seems to be pointing to uh, the Mementos stage, which is one that some people might get a little annoyed about because I think I saw a lot of people who wanted the casino instead. But it appears to be pointing to the Mementos stage instead. And what's very interesting about this situation, as you're seeing kind of an old rumor from PersonaCentral.com. And this had actually pointed to not only Erdrick, but it also pointed to Persona 5R. There were a couple of different announcements that they had kind of pinned in this, uh, in this rumor that was interesting, but they pointed to the thing that everyone wrote off. They said, why would they pick Mementos? Why wouldn't they just do, I don't know, like a casino stage or something? Well, they're the ones who said it was Mementos. And then they also talked about Jack Frost appears on stage with a skill, uh, the marketing of P5R, which is going to be the complete version. So it's going to be like Persona 4 Golden, essentially. And then P5U, which is the fighting game. P5R is going to be 2019. P5U is delayed to uh, next year. And then they also name Erdrick and then several bits of information to follow that as well, which is uh, very interesting there. That could be what that Brave line was in the data mine from before. Remember, we saw uh, Jack and Brave, and a lot of people assume that Brave was Erdrick from, uh, from Dragon Quest, which would make some sense there. So interesting stuff. Sometimes you see these things drop and then you go, wait a minute, there was a rumor or, or something put out before, a leak supposedly that was put out, and this kind of helps to substantiate that a bit. And now we kind of look at that and say, oh yeah, Persona 5R is supposed to be shown next month. So in what, two or three weeks? And that would be a bit before when Joker would be released as the DLC character before the end of April. So it kind of seems like everything's lining up a bit here. And maybe, maybe they do want to announce that P5R is showing up on the Switch and the PS4. It's 2019. And then, and then Nintendo shows up and says, uh, Erdrick, Erdrick is going to be joining Smash. Maybe that's an E3 announcement. Interesting stuff here, though, and the data mining just kind of lends to that. Then our last bit of news. Sadly, I have to tell you that the Untitled Goose game has been delayed. That's right. Now, if you're not following this at all, I think it was like last year, the summer Nindies, we saw a game called the Untitled Goose Game, and it looked weird, it looked different, but it looked interesting. It looked like you were playing a goose that was just doing all kinds of mayhem, and it looked kind of fun. I don't know. So a lot of people started to look after it. They said it was going to release early 2019. Here we are early 2019, kind of looking around, and then they put out a tweet and a video that makes it really hard to get mad at them or annoyed because, of course, they play up to the humor and everything. A uh, good little video there to say that it's been delayed. Unfortunately, yes, it has been delayed, though. It seems to be falling to late 2019 and uh, no real month or anything, but they say they're doing it to try to make the game as best as they can, as best as possible. So maybe that means some uh, extra parts to the game. Maybe it means they're going to smooth out bugs or maybe they just have more ideas that they want to go with. But, you know, I'm willing to wait if it's going to be a better game, a more, I guess, just a more fun game as well. But, yeah, I'll, I'll wait for the Untitled Goose game. I would like to start playing it soon, but who knows? Maybe they'll, like, do stuff with co-op and, like, online play. Who knows? Who knows what they have uh, in mind? But just know you have to wait till possibly the end of this year to get a hold of it. And ladies and gentlemen, it's going to do it here for Newsway. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit the like button. It really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about, whether it's that Smash Bros. data mine. What do you think about that situation? Do you think everything there is starting to kind of line up in P5R, which we're going to find more information about 
uh, in the next couple weeks, I guess, next month in March. I think that does get announced for the Switch, and then we find out about Erdrick later on, and it's interesting to see that point back to that leak with mementos. Then what about the Switch taking January and the MPs by what appears to be quite a large margin. It is 2019 the year for the Switch. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.